Uh, good morning, good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. On behalf of Toastmasters for Professional, I am welcome you all to our meet today. We have a special meet. We have expert speeches and we have a few more things lined up for you. Before we get started, let's get the basic etiquette rule set up. We welcome you all to be on camera and and uh, and help us uh, and help encourage the speakers while they work on their communication skill. But at the same time, if you are not talking, please be on mute. If you are planning to move around for any other work, please put your camera off. We we encourage a positive learning and development environment for all our members and guests here. So I invite all the members and the guests to come forward and whenever you are given a chance to speak. With that, I would just hand over the control or the stage to our president, Madam Toastmaster Catherine. Over to you, Catherine. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Shikhas. Will you please give a warm applause to our Sergeant at Arms volunteer at short notice, Toastmaster Shikhas, who is also our Vice President membership. I would like to welcome you all this morning, this evening, or this afternoon, depending on where you're coming from. Welcome to Toastmasters for Professionals. This is a wonderful club that I've found very beneficial for myself, but also for many members who have come through our hands, through our doors. We connect with one another and we grow together. I would like to recognize the presence of area directors in our midst, Helen Johnson. Helen Josvin, you are most welcome. I apologize for calling you Helen Johnson. My mind is running to the UN. <laughs> So Helen Jospin is the Area Director for Division A. And I'd also like to welcome Area Director Rhonda Lynch-Watts. Thank you for joining us today. You are most welcome to our club. I would also like to thank our members. I will mention their names because we're just a few of us. Toastmaster Swathi, Toastmaster Glemo, Toastmaster Dr. Mary Thomas, Toastmaster Kartik Kadavala. Toastmaster Tresha Savado, who is new to the club. Thank you for coming to the meeting. Thank you for being consistent. Thank you for giving us all of your time, but especially to the club officers, Guillermo Shihas and Dr. Mary Thomas. Thank you for making our club run. Your efforts are not in vain. We really appreciate the hard work that you put in to make this club look the part that it does. I would like to give a chance to our guests to take a moment, a very short moment, to say hello to us. Let us know how you got to know about this meeting and where you're coming from. If you're a Toastmaster, you are also welcome to unmute and just let us know where you're coming from. Nick, Adrena, Kapna, Kadabala, um, no, Adrena, Kapna, Abhijit, and Anwar, please. And Martin, please go ahead and mute yourselves and let us know how you got to know this meeting. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. I am a member of uh, Karachi Toastmasters Club at the moment. Um, I'm not an official Toastmaster, but uh, I'm a frequent guest. And um, I came to know uh, from uh, the group of KTC, uh, to, from the KT group, in fact. Uh, and I live in Karachi. I'm a Pakistani national. Thank you so much. Anwar? Postmaster Abhijit, the floor is yours. Okay. Would you just like to expect an introduction from my side or straight away should I just be jumping into the main workshop? No, just eventually, but just say hello to us as a guest. Hi, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all my fellow Toastmasters. I am Toastmaster Abhijit. I've been in the Toastmasters platform for over seven years now. I'm based in India, in the capital of New Delhi. And... Uh, Professionally, I am a business developer and a contract professional working in Samsung India. And 
I'm really grateful that, that I get got an opportunity to be part of a multi-dimensional, a uh, diversified club of those master professionals. I've been seeing uh, the flyers by uh, James a lot of times in different groups. I've been very fascinated. I thought that one fine day I would probably be a part of this bio and see uh, luck takes me here. So I'm really looking forward to a great afternoon or morning or evening along with all of you present here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you, you Tosmas Abhijit. Martin, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin, and I'm from Mexico. Uh, I'm not part of uh, any club yet. Uh, I would like to join one club to learn my my speech and learn you know, all these skills and improve myself. And that's the reason why I'm here. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome, Martin. Kalpana, please. Uh, hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, I'm Kalpana and I'm from Chennai. Uh, I could say like decades ago, I attended one or two Toastmaster Club as a guest. Uh, and uh, it's my long term you know, goal or wish that I should be part of the Toastmaster Club or join as a member. Um, but now I think it's going to fulfill uh, my wish or I can achieve my wish like joining as a Toastmaster Club. Um, I'm really happy to meet you all and um, looking forward uh, to attend the Ma uh, Toastmaster Club um, you know, without fail and you know, grow along with everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tosma Sakapna. Ricky, are you there? Ricky So and, nu and Nick, please prepare to speak. Nick, are you there? Just say hello to us, yes. how you got to know about the meeting. Thank you. Yeah, my name's Nick. I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia. Um, and I did a lot of research and I wanted to improve my communication skills. So I found Toastmasters to be the perfect avenue to do so. Um, this is the second club I'm sitting in on. I sat in on um, Buddy's Toastmaster Club as well, something virtual, since I have to commute a lot for work, so I didn't really have time to go anywhere physically. Uh, but I found out about your club through uh, some web search and also trying to find a good fit for a professional-oriented club, and you guys fit the bill perfectly. So thanks for having me, and I look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much, Nick. Welcome, and I hope that you find your corner in this club and make it your home. Um, I'd just like to give an opportunity to Postmaster Adriana. Are you there? If you can say hello to us, and then we can begin our meeting. Thank you. Hi, good day, everyone. My name is Adriana. I'm from Malaysia. I got to know about this through my other networking Postmaster Club, and I'm happy to see everybody here today. It's a platform where um, learning is interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tosma Sadrana. Adash, do you, would you like to say hello briefly? And then we start. Hello, everyone. I'm Toastmaster Adash Chandran from India. I came to know about this event through Distinguished Toastmaster Abhijit Roy, I thought of attending this and within the first 15 seconds, I'm glad to see distinct people from various locations. Looking forward to an enjoyable meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, our guests. Thank you for taking the time to come and meet with us. We really appreciate your time. And today we have a very special meeting, but before I go ahead, to describe our meeting, I'd like to mention that we will be having club elections. And I would like to invite our Toastmaster of the day, Dr. Mary Thomas, will you please put your hands together and welcome our Vice President of Education, who is also the Toastmaster of the day, Dr. Mary Thomas. Thank you, President Catherine. And welcome to everyone who is with us today, whether they are Toastmasters, whether they are members of our club, or they are guests who are non-Toastmasters. 
I would like to introduce myself. I am Dr. Mary Thomas. I am a Malaysian, but practicing in the Philippines. I am the Vice President Education of this club, as well as another club in District 102, Page Turner's to Advanced Toastmasters Club. I recognize quite a number of faces here, and I'm so happy to see you all. I'm also very happy to have our di Division Director of Division A, District 101, Distinguished Toastmaster Helen Josephine. I'm also welcoming Area Director of District 81, who's with us as well, Toastmaster Rhonda. Thank you for being a part of us today. I noticed that there are more guests today. And what I can see from that is that we're all trying to manage our stress. Isn't that why we are here? We have Distinguished Toastmaster, Abhijit Roy, who is with us, coming from India. Um, and uh, let me introduce him. And you can also listen to how he is going to tell us and give us tips on how to manage stress. Now, I would say that we've heard how to manage stress, I think, for the last 20 years, and all of us are so stressed up. But Abhijit is going to give us more tips, and I hope it hits a tender, uh, it hits the right place, it hits a chord in our heart, which would make us change. The whole thing is to listen and then change. So Distinguished Toastmaster Abhijit Roy is a business development and contracts professional working with Samsung India. Within Toastmasters, he has been able to achieve the feat of being a two-time Distinguished Toastmaster. He's also a keynote speaker, who has delivered both online and offline seminars and workshops globally in the past five or six years. He has been associated with various corporate companies and institutions for his workshops. Not just that, he has a feather in his cap for having mentored more than 75 individuals in the field of public speaking. Distinguished, distinguished Toastmaster Abhijit Roy, it's a pleasure to have you with us. And we would like to hear on ways to manage stress. Everybody relax. There we go. Stage is yours. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, Mary Thomas, and all fellow Toastmasters or Toastmaster professionals, guests joining in from various parts of the world. Today, I have the honor and privilege to share my own experience and the level of stress that I have been able to manage. I'm still managing because when you all would have seen the flyer, you would have seen the title of today's workshop that I would be talking on, that's managing stress. But it really doesn't mean that if somebody is talking about a particular topic or Taking, conducting a workshop, that individual is a pro in that. So we all as individuals or human beings kind of undergo stress at every minute, every second, and every part of our life. The moment we move out of this virtual meeting, we will be acquainted with something which will again cause some kind of stress. But it is all about we all understanding exactly whether it's a positive form of stress or it's a negative form of stress. Theoretically, what we understand is stress will always call, cause damage. But sometimes stress is also something which causes us some benefits, which we'll talk as in due course of time. I intentionally did not practice to prepare any specific slides because this is a very relatable topic. This is a topic which talks about human connections, our experiences. So if I start presenting a slide, it will talk more about the theoretical concepts of managing stress, which you can anyways go on to Google and try to figure out. But most importantly, why 
we need to understand that stress in today's scenario is important to manage is because of the different things, the different happenings which is moving around around us. If you would have seen or probably even would have witnessed going back to our ancestors, our grandparents, our parents, their average age span or lifespan would have been anywhere around 60 or 70 as a minimum. But these days, if you see, the average span is around 45 to 50. Most of the people either suffer attacks, panic attacks, heart attacks, or strokes, or in a negative way, end up committing suicide. And these are simple reasons why they are not able to manage stress properly and more effectively. If we as individuals understand the core reason why stress is happening, how we can really undergo those management skills of man handling stress effectively, life will be much better for all of us. In different parts of our world, we have different things happening around us. If I talk about Mary, she would have had different things happening around her in Malaysia or in Indonesia, Philippines, what she talked about. Here in India, it's too hot. I'm not able to manage it. I cannot bear the heat. So what do I end up doing? Be stressful, be not able to live life. Well, that's not a solution. I have to find out different modes of and understand what other things that I can do preferably to manage it. And that is exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. There's no core definition of what stress is for all of us. We all do understand what stress is. But there are two forms of stresses. One is distress and one is eustress. Distress is something which is normally caused Sorry, distress is normally caused due to the negative form of it. But if you want to see the positive form of it, it is called as eustress. Okay. For example, I'll talk about the eustress part of it. You have your son or daughter and you're getting them married. Or you are celebrating a birthday. You have a lot of guests to attend and you don't know how to manage it. You will be in stress, but that's not called distress. That's not really causing you human damage or mental damage. You are in stress because you feel that how will you be able to manage your son's or daughter's birthday or their uh, marriage ceremony they are going to have. So it's a positive stress that you're having. You want to make it a success. You want to make it grand. It's very much ceremonial. And that is why you are full of stress in that situation. And it's bound to happen. You cannot have any control over it. But on the other side, you lose money because of some online fraud. You do a transaction on the internet and you figure out that there would have been a cyber crime happen that happened and you lose a lot of dollars that your bank account suddenly gets seized and a lot of money is being looted. Now, this is something which is distress. This is not happy stress to you that you will undergo because you have lost money. Now, what you will end up doing? Will you end up just finding a rope for yourself or take up a knife and cut your face? No. There are ways to overcome this. As money is something like a water, it will flow in and flow out. All you need to do is take control over your nerves, take control over your emotions, and try to find out what you can probably do next. The first thing that in form of distress that you can ideally do is be a little calm. Because that is the basic minimum requirement of any individual or any person to avoid stress. I'm talking about the distress part of it. The sad or the more cumbersome 
form of stress that we will all undergo. The second part is rethink of what has happened and try and figure out how you can find out more calculative decisions or ways to find out how you can exactly be able to handle the situations more effectively. If you feel you need to have somebody within your circle to reach out to, someone very trustworthy, someone very reliable, someone whom you can connect with and share the moment that you have witnessed, please do feel free. It's always to have one or two people beside you to support you in this cause of managing the situation that has happened rather than you being able to handle it all single-handedly. Remember, my friends, whenever you have a situation or difficult moment in your life, you may be very strong emotionally, psychologically, mentally, but when situations arise which goes out of your hands, it's beyond control or measurable, people lose control of their thoughts. You may just come up and say, I'm very strong. I can handle anything. But no, at that very moment when you come across the situation, it really creates a very difficult environment for that person. I, in my capacity, last year, around the month of December, give you two examples. One example is where there was a person who said that I can multiply your amount which you invest in us. So if you just spend about $100, we can multiply that to 200 And he did that. When I deposited $100, he gave me about 200 Then he said, I'll multiply that 500 to 1000 so I did, I did pay five, 500 and he multiplied that and gave me $1,000 straight into my account. And so on and so forth, he started to gain my confidence. At one point in time, he said, I can multiply your 5,000 into a 10,000 and see how people start getting into the scoop. I became even more greedy. I said, oh my God, 500, your 5,000 to a $10,000. That's huge money. And I can probably get that in just about a few seconds. So what I did, straight away transferred $5,000 into that man's account. And eventually what happened? He never came back. So these are very common things which happen. But we start getting involved in these kind of scoops, in this kind of frauds so easily because they kind of hypnotize us, hypnotize our thoughts, our will and try to understand who we are. And now what that happened is I've already had already lost at $5,000. Now $5,000 is quite a bit of an amount for that instant moment. You may be able to recover it over a period of time, but at that point of time, you have just lost it, right? So what do I do? Should I just say that, oh, it's lost. I can't do anything. I am in deep stress. That's distress. That's not happy note. The, even if I say I'm very strong, but I am not, because at that moment, it has actually hit me so bad with that loss, which is going to be something which is irrecoverable. So I find somebody very reliable, my better half. I talk, talk it out to my wife and say that this is what the problem is. Now, no matter what, the person in crime, your better half or your siblings or your parents, they will always find you in this kind of situation. They will never let you be alone. They will give you that kind of moral support that comfort, which is basically the need of that art. And eventually, if you have lost that money, you have lost it. But the aftermath is something that is controllable, which is through the way of having a human connection. So this is the way I could grab hold of it. My father, in the month of January this year, he met a very severe heart attack. He had three major blockages in his heart and he had to undergo a bypass surgery. But he was with 
his family members. He was with his wife, my mom, myself, my wife, and my sister. This eventually kind of gave me distress. Not because a lot of money would have been invested. So why did I rely on two things? On one side, I lost money. Here also, I had to spend a lot of money for my father's treatment. But the stress here was different. The stress here was not, rather it was not about just about 5,000, my friends, let me tell you. I always ended up $20,000. Let me calculate that for benefit of everyone. It was not 5,000. It was $20,000 that I had already spent on my father's treatment. But that moment, that 20,000, which is the four times multiplier of that 5,000, was not something that bothered me, even for a minute. But what really gave me stress is my father's health recovery. So situations varies. In, my, in the first case, which I gave you the example, that was pure money, which I lost. And I was in stress because I lost it. Here also, it was multiplier four. But then the stress was different. It was not the money that went off, but it was the other way around. So we understanding we as individuals will undergo this kind of situations at every step that we take in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Sometimes we ignore it. Sometimes we do not even realize it that these are certain forms of stress which have hit us. It's just about a small smog or probably you can say a quick wind that has blown up and you will not be able to even understand. So let us realize this, that there are different forms of stress which will cause human damage. They may also give us happy moments. At the same time, we will understand of how we can effectively make things better. First thing, let us understand one more aspect of life, that these stress causes a lot of damage. They will probably end up giving you a little bit of a heart chest pain, heart attacks. You can even go in trauma. You can go in depression. You will lose control of the kind of activities that you do on a day to basis. Your productivity ideally reduces. You will be in a position not to have healthy food. You will feel isolated. You will form that insomnia kind of an approach. You will find yourself very much uh, in a in a state of mind where you will start arguing and fighting with your near and dear ones. So these are some of the basic symptoms that hit us. Now, what are the the things that you can probably end up doing? when you have these kinds of stress, is a lot much. People do say that meditation does work wonders. If you do a lot of yoga or a lot of meditation, it will help you to control over stress. But let me tell you this, that yoga or meditation is just one element out of it. It really doesn't mean that you will have full control of your stress that you're having or that has been built up. So what I would suggest and what you can actually do in case if you have a pen and paper right in front of you, you can keep note of the break even that I have created for managing stress. So if you would have seen the flyer which our dear James have actually made, he has mentioned managing stress. So managing stress is something very simplified. We know what we are here for. We are trying to manage stress. But then I have broken that managing stress into different elements. And you can keep note of that. However, even if suppose if you have not been able to do it, I will share the slides post the meeting. Share it with either Master Mary or Catherine or anyone who can then circulate it around the team. This is pure reason of not sharing it on a screen 
because I don't want to people look into the screen and not really connect. But before anything, I will ask you one simple thing. We are all here for one reason. Just to be a part of the meeting or just really figure out that after this meeting, I really want, want to work on those elements of managing stress or not. I'm very sure that all of you have come here to figure out how you can connect with what I'm sharing. In the first part of the slides, when I when I start sharing my views, I did mention something that I'm not a pro. At every work of my life, even I undergo stress. It's just about my own learnings, my own best practices that I've followed just to reduce the intensity. I cannot control over the stress that I may have. I can just reduce the intensity of it. It's just about diabetes, which anybody would have. Diabetes is incurable once you are already diagnosed. All you can do is take control, take charge of it, have proper medications, and lead a healthy life. Build up your body, and then that's do it. So I'll talk about the main elements of managing stress. Okay. Most importantly, what you can probably do here is M stand for manipulating the overall situation. Right. A is articulating your thoughts. Okay. N M for managing is M. N for never say that I can't control over the situation which I'm talking about. Again, A starts for being a little ambitious. G is basically go into the depth analysis of what the situation is for you. I is introspect. N again is don't be nervous. Be strong enough to handle the situation. And the last G managing key is give away. Don't keep the stress to yourself. Pass it on. That is the I won't I'm really not saying that you really go on to pass the stress to your family members and anybody else. But the easier way is just throw it open to the environment around you. You don't have to let it stick to you. Wipe it off. That is the easier solution. Theoretically, you will find ample resources which will help you to understand how you can manage stress. But today, the workshop, the session was not to really talk theoretical aspects of it, but to ensure that you all understand, we all understand of the need of managing stress. Because once we really get into the in-depth understanding of why this is required, we will have a much better place to live. The world is so beautiful, my friends. We are in Toastmasters. We are all like-minded people. We are all come here to be better communicators and leaders. We have been able to do so good in our lives. Toastmasters for professionals, I'm not sure about that member, but probably would have lost somebody very near and dear recently who have been very instrumental in creating a very good legacy for the club and other clubs in India and beyond. I would not prefer to call out his name, but you would have been able to understand who preferably I'm talking about, but he was also a very good friend of mine. But we never knew that he could have been in a lot of stress and that is why this happened. So eventually, what I would end up saying with a very happy and a very important note for all of us here is that have a very healthy life. This is just not about a message. This is a dose that you will need to have as a mandate 
each and every single day. The moment you wake up in the next morning, have a dose of that happy capsule within yourself. Just gallop it with a sip of water and say this to your mind that today I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be creating more happy faces. Have this mantra, have this particular mission. Look after, look after yourself and your family members. And after a month, when you have this in mind and you do it, you see you will be having a lot of change. You will be able to cub out a lot of stress from within you. Be better versions of yourself and live a very, very happy life. You never know as time flows when our soul will also flow out. So when, as long as we are here, just try and manage stress, try and be healthy and safe and be yourself. Thank you again for giving me this opportunity for Toastmasters and professionals. I know I've all got a bit emotional towards the bag end when I was talking about one of my dear friends whom we lost very recently. But having said that, this is what it is. So let's keep up to ourselves and make the world a much more better place to live in. Thank you once again. And over to you, Madam Toastmaster Mary Thomas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for de-stressing us, I believe. Let's give him a big round of applause. Our keynote speaker, distinguished Toastmaster Abhijit Roy, coming to us from India. Thank you very much. We have a very a surprise segment coming up because we have the privilege of having a Toastmaster also from India who has taken the Toastmasters platform by storm. I actually use that word storm. Let me introduce our mystery speaker. Let's listen to some interesting numbers. He has delivered 315 speeches, 315. He has attended meetings in 250 clubs. He has done 50 speech evaluation roles and completed all the 11 parts of the Pathway Program within six months and 38 hours of speech time. Level one of effective coaching path was completed in one day, <clears throat> sorry, on April 4th, 2023. I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of blues there. Let me welcome and put your hands together and welcome Toastmaster Adash Chandran. We are having the privilege of having him here with us, who has had an amazing Toastmasters journey, and he's going to share it with us. Toastmaster Adash, the platform is yours. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the meeting. How many of you, how many of you were introverts before joining Toastmasters or did not have the conference to speak? Uh, thank you, Trees. Did not have the conference to speak publicly or appear publicly in front of others. I see some hand raises. Thank you for that. Well, I was also such a person, a very shy person, no conference at all. I was even scared to speak to ladies, even when they used to come and speak, at, speak towards me. I was even scared to give them a handshake when they offered me a handshake. I was such a, what do I say? I'm, I was not at all a social person. My family members, the parents, they got fed up of my this attitude. They were all like, oh my God, why this kind of a person? Everyone else in our family, they are all social. Adash does not meet or speak with anyone. And 
the most the biggest complaint was i never smiled i did not have a smile at all even when i used to get the best marks or even when i pass a, a tough certificate certifications i will never have a smile my parents told me if you don't have a smile you won't even get a success you won't even get a marriage proposal done how will a lady be with a man who can't smile i joined toastmasters in 2022 during the pandemic time it was tough times the first 3 weeks i was a silent person later i started attending toastmasters regularly i got over my shyness and introvert and my parents when they noticed that i was i attended toastmasters four weeks in a row the question came it was an unexpected question my parents they asked me artish you generally don't go out you don't speak with people i believe you are going there for some other purpose and then they asked me are you going there to meet your girlfriend my mother assumed that i found my girlfriend in that toastmasters club i love her that is why i'm going to visit her the club regularly later i also happened to discover the online speaking platform online speaking platform media like ecspeak.org through ecspeak.org i was able to find and interact with people from different cultures different countries locations and due to that i have gained the confidence to speak and mingle with people earlier for me to be friends or interact freely with a person i needed at least 3 weeks to 1 month of time today i do not need that i just need 15 seconds or so later i started regularly attending toastmasters meeting and it came to a level where i attend at least i attended at least one meeting every day later after delivering so much speeches constantly i was able to complete 11 parts in 6 months our respected distinguished toastmaster mentioned about that age of people earlier people used to survey the usual age limit like span was 70 to 80 now it is come down to 40 to 45 at least in my place yes it is true i searched in google how much time does it take to complete a path in toastmasters you can also go and google search today it is there the search result was it takes 2 years to complete one path i calculated 2 years into 11 paths 22 years oh my god 22 years i won't be i mean i may not be even alive after 22 years so i need to get everything completed fast i completed it and later people started asking me atish you have completed all 11 paths that was so stupid now you will be bored what will you have to do now in toastmasters 11 paths means 194 speeches i delivered 194 speeches in 84 clubs while completing 11 paths today i have delivered 315 speeches 315 minus 194 120 i have delivered 121 extra speeches after the 11 parts for the 11 parts i have attended 84 clubs today i have attended 250 toastmasters clubs so that, that is 163 more clubs so people will be there to demotivate you at times don't really bother or listen to that take it for me the toastmasters journey has been beneficial and i have been encouraging others also 
to do so it can be beneficial in life in your life both professionally and personally i would encourage you to be an active participant in toast masters and make the most out of it don't just remain in your comfort zone over to your respected toast master of the meeting a big round of applause not just for his speech today but for what he has achieved as a toastmaster now if this doesn't motivate toastmasters and the guests i don't know what else will check out the mats that's fantastic thank you so much toastmaster adash for sharing with us your journey your 6 month journey you're right 22 years hmm I've been in it for 33 years. I haven't even completed. I've just completed one part. And just one part of the CNL manual those days, a legacy program. So that's motivation Wednesday for you or motivation Tuesday for you. We would like to now continue with our speakers. Thank you again, Adash. I have to say thank you quite a number of times. I'm so happy that you were with us today. We continue with speakers. And speakers, please be motivated by what Toastmaster Adash has said. And same goes for all the uh, Toastmasters. Let me invite the evaluator for Toastmaster Kartik Kanavala, who will be delivering his speech on level three. Toastmaster Guillermo James, you are the evaluator. Please introduce the speaker. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Mary. Um... I just want to quickly say that it, 11 paths in six months, that really impresses me too. Uh, I finished only one level in one year. So I, I think I better speed it up. Today, I have the privilege of evaluating Toastmaster Karthik Kalavala. He has a level three speech. Uh, and the name of that speech is That Two Minutes of Patience. So without further ado, um, Karthik, that two minutes of patience, that two minutes of patient, patience, Karthik Kalabala. Please go ahead. Thank you, Dhanu. We all have conflicts. What is the, most of the times we have conflicts with others or with ourselves. In my case, I always used to have conflict with myself. Doesn't matter if I'm taking very big decisions or small decisions. If I has to take a decision, I always used to have this conflict of what is right for me? What if it's wrong, it goes wrong? This, this continued to happen from my childhood. And then the point came where I has to take my career decision whether I should start a new business or join my MBA. In everyone's life, there will be one person who helps us in resolving whatever issues, whatever conflicts you are having. At that time, I, I met one of my good mentor. He suggested me to take four options. Kathik, just answer these four questions, then you will be clear in every, whatever your decision you are making. First, try to answer why you want to go for it. Then, what are the advantages of it? How you can do it? And what if you don't do it? I repeat, why you want to do it? What you want to do it? How you want to do it? What if you don't do it? So I started to answer these questions in two perspectives. One is for my MBA. Uh, okay, now I want to take my MBA. I had a dream to go for a good college. Though I studied my graduation in a very good college, that still continued in my in me. I want to take, but I'm a bit confused about which branch should I take in MBA. I don't want to do the same mistake which I did in my graduation, which I'm not less aware and took a improper branch which i'm not even fit for it so i don't want to take same decision in my mba at this time i'm not sure whether which branch to take 
so forget about which branch to take whether i should go for mba or not i am not ever even sure for it then i asked to myself why i wish to go for mba uh to get meet good friends and a good career okay this already happened in my life then comes the second question what i want to do in my mba with my mba degree i'm not sure because my ultimate goal is to do a business after my mba also i wish to go for do my business before mba also i would like to do my business because that is my goal my what is not sure not clear here and what the next question how you want to do that how you want to go there yes it's uh, i has to pay a bunch of amount to the good college because i strongly believe that good colleges will only give help you to become an a better person in yourself so there will be lost of waste of money apart from waste of money two years of your career will be damaged two years of my career will i has to again give it for it so what if then I, here comes the next question what if i don't do it mm, i will uh, not waste this to uh, this good amount of money and my two years get saved okay now i has to this are the i'm not clear about my mba when it comes to my business so again same questions why i want to do my business from my childhood i started to observe that many people who are financially independent are only because of their business because world is changing a lot from our old generations mostly in india our parents are most likely to for psus government psus but i um, i thought to, the world is changing i observed that the world is changing and i wish to do something new to take my generation into a new height so my how is <laughs> my why is here what i has to do yes there are many more coaches around the world to explain to identify what i has to do and we also have a beautiful book called ikigai where your why and why your what will be very clear when you start to follow that methods okay now how to do that yes i have a very good mentors who are marwadis mostly indian marwadis are very good in doing business so these people are really there to help me if not them i can spend some amount and get hire some good coaches who can help me to grow in the business okay what if i don't do if i don't do the business mm. i will be like normally everyone's life as my generations is used to be i used to be say i will be safe i can't take that bold step to change my family financial freedom so when i come to neutral position when i started to observe my life in answering the these questions for business point of view and the same for mba point of view as per my as per my knowledge my why and my what if my what, how and my what are so clear in my business compared to my mba so my friends you can have, this help me to take my boldest decision to take to start my business into the field of digital marketing so doesn't matter whatever conflicts you are facing you can have this four questions in your hand and just chunk down what are the different things that you are getting benefited while based on your decisions this not only applies for me when i have started to observe these questions with others when two persons are getting conflicted when i ask them why you want to do this what are the biggest benefit we are going to get because of this how we we are going to do that what is the cost for it what if we don't do that and they are surprisingly they are also coming to the same conclusion what is the best for them so my friends i have uh, i want to share this mantra with you to use this four questions in your conflicts with yourself when you are stuck in taking any decisions thank you thank you toastmaster kadavana We'll have our next speaker, and to evaluate her is Toastmaster Shiha Becker.
Toastmaster Shias, please introduce your speaker. Thank you, Toastmaster Mary. Uh, fellow Toastmasters and guests, today my uh, target speaker is Toastmaster Swati. Toastmaster Swati is, will be delivering her level one project three speech from the strategic relationship pathway. The, the objective of this particular project is to practice and uh, present a speech that has vocal variety and body language present to enhance a speech. So that is the main objective that I would be looking for in Toastmaster Swati's speech. This will be a five to seven minute speech. Toastmaster Swati, all the very best. Now let me call upon Toastmaster Swati with the speech title. Toastmaster Swati, embracing the unknown, embracing the unknown Toastmaster Swati. Thank you, Toastmaster Shihas. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my dear fellow Toastmasters, and I'll welcome all my guests for today's meeting. Every human journey is full of unexpected twists and turns in life. Isn't that true? These tough times reveal our true strength and guide us to move forward. Tonight, I invite you to explore a powerful concept of embracing the unknown and trusting the process with me. This mindset not only empowers us, but also deepens our understanding on resilience and perseverance. Trusting the process means willingness to accept wherever you are at every stage of your life. Be grateful for what you have. Whereas embracing the unknown is to be gratitude in midst of all this uncertainties and trusting the process. Uh, trusting the process is uh, more than just passively accepting our fate. People here could say that, yeah, I trust the process. I just go with the flow. Uh, my destiny is already written by the Almighty. I don't have any control over my life. That might be a true for a certain extent, but what I'm going to talk is something beyond that. So I will delve into why trusting the process is essential in the pursuit of our professional and personal development. Uh, let me start with a story which I read long, long ago uh, when I was a kid. It is about a Chinese farmer. This farmer had an horse uh, which he used to uh, use while plowing the field. One day he was out of town and when he came back, he found that his horse went missing. Everybody in the village would come to his house and say, what a bad luck, you lost your horse. The farmer said, bad luck or good luck, who knows. The horse which went missing came back after a week with a herd of wild horses. The villagers would stop by his home and say, you guys, you're so lucky, you got a herd full of wild horses. So the old man again said, who knows whether it's luck, good luck or bad luck. And then uh, after a month, his son went on one of the wild horses and fell down and broke his leg. The villagers came back and said, oh, well, what a bad luck this wild horse brought your son. He lost his leg. The old man again said the same sentence, bad luck or good luck, who knows. A week later, uh, the army came into the village and took all young men as soldiers to the emperor. Only the old man's son was spared because he couldn't fight with the broken leg. So all the villagers said, you are really lucky, your son is with you, but all our kids are uh, serving as soldiers to the emperor. So the old man again said, who knows whether it's a good luck and good luck or bad luck. This story could be a little too cinematic to convince us to trust the process. We never know if the hurdles we are experiencing now are going to be the exact step we need for good luck in the future. Let me share you another uh, deeply personal experience from my husband's journey. My husband landed a well-paying job right after his graduation. While we were initially thrilled for his new opportunity, he soon started complaining about dissatisfaction in his job uh, because of uh, suffocating bureaucracy, some politics between his team members. Within a few months, he found he was the one he was one of them uh, who got laid off from their jobs. What came next was a period with uncertainty and sleepless nights. Mm -hmm. Amidst the turmoil, my husband managed to secure another job, but it came with a lower salary and required us to move to a different city. We weren't happy about that. He was totally devastated that he had to move to a different city and for a reduced pay. If at least the pay was good or it was the same city, he would have felt more content. 
but with a lot of disappointment, we relocated for the new city for the new job. However, to our surprise, although the salary was lower, the cost of living in this new city also was significantly lower than the previous one. Uh, in our previous city, buying a home seemed like an unattainable dream for us. But now, mm -hmm. Because of affordable costs here, we have hope and possibility of purchasing a home in the near future. This experience has taught us that importance of trusting the process. Even when the path seems uncertain and full of challenges, sometimes the steps we are forced to take, although seemingly negative at times, can lead us to unexpected and better opportunities. In conclusion, I would like to say, let us embrace the wisdom of combination of both trusting the process and embracing the unknown. These are the guiding principles of our lives. What you think good today may be bad tomorrow. And what you think bad to today might really be doing something good tomorrow. Embrace life as it falls and find meaning and purpose in each experience and be grateful for what you have. Thank you so much. Back to you, Toastmaster Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Swadi, for your motivational speech. And I think that was a message would be, that would be very useful for all of us at some point in our lives or many points in our lives. Before I move on to the evaluation segment, which is a very quick one, I would like to have everyone switch on their cameras because we are going to take a, a picture. Could you please switch on your cameras? There are 23 of us. We want to keep the memories. She has. Could you tell us when you're clicking? Or oh, anyone else who wants to click, it's fine. Yeah, Cameras on, waiting. smile. I'm just waiting for Suruchi, Kadar, Anthony, and Arfa to switch on their camera. If you guys can switch on, that would be great. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, it seems others is joining, so let's wait for a minute. Adish, can you please switch on your camera? We are just trying to take a picture. Thank you, Adish. On the count of three, say Toastmasters. One minute. I'll take one more, just a minute. <clears throat> Perfect. Are we good? Yes, thank you so much. We can continue. <laughs> Our smiles were freezing. Huh. All right. Okay. okay. All right. So let's quickly move on to the evaluation segment. There will be three minutes, two evaluations. It'll take us six minutes. After that, we'll move straight into the elections. Uh, let's, let me call upon the first evaluator, GJ. Please come forward. Thank you, Mary. Let me just spotlight Karthik and myself so that I see him. There we go. Karthik, I congratulate you on your speech. I, I really enjoyed it. I evaluated you once before and thank you for giving me this privilege again. Today, you had the purpose and the objective of understanding the steps and strategies to address conflict. And you definitely accomplished that. You had the conflict of a tough choice after you graduated, you didn't know what to do. And so you told us about your experience with that and how you managed it. Uh, the, the purpose of the speech matters above everything else. And you, you definitely completed that part, so. You got that. I also like that your confidence. You you didn't look nervous at all. Maybe you act really well, or you really don't feel any anything, any nervousness. But it, it looked great. So so good job on that. You asked me to look to pay attention to your voice modulation, and I, I did see an opportunity for improvement in this area. You have an extremely calming voice 
And so if someone feels nervous, uh, I just want them, to, I want to say to them, go oh, listen to Karthik, <laughs> he'll calm you down. So I, I love that about your voice. I also, I do want to encourage you to add a little excitement and maybe some more energy in parts of the story in which it makes sense to do that. Let loose a little and maybe practice in front of a mirror or record yourself so that you can watch it back. I also noticed that the speech went a little over time. So to that, I also say, I also encourage you to practice the speech many, many times and record yourself. And if you notice that it goes over time, then take a little bit of the speech, uh, cut it a little bit. I love that you took pauses to, to think. A lot of speakers uh, don't do that. I, I myself struggle with it. And so I admire that quality of yours. I also noticed that you stuttered a few times, but you recovered well, and that matters so much. It, again, it speaks to your high level of confidence. I understood everything you said. You speak great and your internet internet connection didn't break up at all. You used physical gestures very, very effectively and you you appeared very comfortable throughout the whole thing. You accomplished the goal and and I wanna thank you again for this opportunity to let me evaluate you. Thank you and back to you, Toastmaster for the day, Mary. Thank you, DJ. Let me call upon the next evaluator, Toastmaster Shihas, evaluating Toastmaster Swati. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster uh, Mary. I, I see that Toastmaster Swati is also online. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, and dear Swati, the objective of this particular project was to uh, present a vocal variety and body language in your speech. Body language that gives verbal and non-verb, uh, non-verb, sorry, body language that gives intentional or non-intentional communication cues and body, uh, vocal variety to enhance what you're trying to convey to your speaker. Your speech started with the questions and it had a lot of examples. It's examples with stories that people can connect. So when you are talking about uh, your husband got laid off and you moved from one city to another city. They were relatable examples that people, common people like me and others can relate to. So that story was connecting with the audience. But when it comes to the objective of the speech, that is body language and vocal variety, I believe we have some work to do here. When, when we talk about body language, what I was able to see is I was just able to see your face. So if you are moving your hand, that is something below the shoulder level, right? Or if you were doing something that was not visible to the audience. And if you were trying to do that and pass some kind of uh, emotions to the audience, I believe that did not go through. So one step, one option would be to maybe step back or stand. Simple like uh, some some mo mo uh, movement, right? I'm just trying to move my hand to just to show that. Not part of my evaluation though. The second is with respect to the vocal variety. Vocal variety was there, but I would suggest that if the speed was a little bit low on the lower side. So we have audience from different geographies here. Okay. And what happens is if audience from different geographies are there, the accent style varies. So how Dr. Mary speaks, how Catherine speaks, or how I speak, we all are coming from different accents. So if you if your speed is a little bit low, right? Not I'm not, not asking you to go very low, but a little bit on the lower side, it gives us a time to basically understand and then have that information sink in. Because there was a lot of stories, there are a lot of goodness that was there in the speech that we can take back home and we can try to add it on our, uh, add it to our personal life journey. And we there are a lot of stories that could be related to the managing stress part that Toastmaster Apichit was uh, talking a short while ago. With that, I'd suggest that uh, in order to meet this objective, maybe in the next week or so, right, we can just try to stand back and just repeat the speech. The speech was really awesome. I have no no 
uh, like what you say, and, and no suggestions and you can do, but you can just stand back and just re-deliver it, right? So we will be able to know that, okay, fine, my vocal variety is right or not, or my body language is right or not. That will really be great. That is just from my side and be looking forward to your speeches in the coming week too. Thank you, Toastmaster Swati. And back to Toastmaster Mary for continuing. Thank you. Thank you, Toastmaster Shihas. We quickly have the timer's report, especially on the speeches. Timer, Toastmaster Catherine. Thank you so much, Dr. Mary Thomas. For my report, our keynote speaker spoke for 24 minutes. Our speaker, Kartik spoke for seven minutes and 30 seconds exactly, and that was within time. Our speaker, Swadi, spoke for five minutes and 35 seconds. That was still in time. Our evaluators were over top over the, over the time by a minute and 30 seconds each. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And now I call this meeting to a close for us to network and connect one with another. Thank you so much for coming today.